Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about describing location in a distribution. The first way we're going to be talking about describing that location is by using an individual's percentile. And an individual's percentile is the percent of values in a distribution that are less than the individual's data value. It's very important that when we are finding the percentile to remember that it's less than. Also, we need to be really careful with our language when we're describing percentiles. Percentiles are specific locations in a distribution. So an observation isn't in an 84th percentile, rather it's at the 84th percentile. So just be careful when you guys are describing your percentiles. And we're gonna do an example on the next page. So let's do that. So example number 15, which salads are at McDonald's? So the dot plot below shows the number of calories in McDonald's salads in recent years. So we're gonna find the percentile for the premium bacon ranch salad with grilled chicken, which contains 230 calories. So we're gonna be looking at our uh, dots over here. So we have 230 calories appears to be right here. Now, remember that a percentile is the percent of values in a distribution that are less than the individual's data value. So if you look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six that are less. And we're going, to we're going to divide that by the total number of salads that we have, and that's going to be 11. So we have 6 divided by 11, which is going to give us roughly 55%. So what does this mean? This means that, this means that the premium bacon ranch salad with grilled chicken is at the 55th percentile. Okay, so part B, the premium bacon ranch salad without chicken is at the 18th percentile of the distribution. We're gonna interpret this value in context and how many calories does the premium bacon ranch salad contain? Remember, this is the one without chicken. So about 18% of the salads have fewer calories than the premium bacon ranch salad. That's what the interpretation in context means. So let's write that out, about 18% of the salads have fewer calories than the bacon ranch salad. And remember that's sans chicken, okay? Um, now because 18% of 11 would be about, so remember 18% can be written as 0.18 and there are 11 salads here. So 18% of 11, or 0.18 times 11, is approximately 1.98. So that means, uh, because of a rounding error, that we're going to round this to 2. 2 because of rounding error. So that means that because there will be 2 less than our bacon ranch salad, that means that one of these two here have to be our bacon ranch salad without chicken. And if we look, it looks like these marks are all by 20 calories. So it looks like the bacon ranch salad without chicken has 140 calories. So this is probably one of the more mathier things you guys have done so far in this class. Let's keep going. So I also want to talk about a different type of way to talk about percentiles, and that is using a cumulative relative frequency graph. Now I know that that is a mouthful, a cumulative relative frequency graph, and what it is is it, it plots a point corresponding to the cumulative relative frequency in each interval at the smallest value of the next interval, starting with a point at a height of about 0%, at the smallest value of the interval. Consecutive points are then connected with line segments to form the graph. 
If you guys can't remember a cumulative relative frequency graph, there's another name for this. It's called an ogive. Um, and I, I constantly use this because cumulative relative frequency graph is a lot to say over and over and over again. So let's talk about this example, because this right here is an example of what an ogive looks like. This right here is an ogive. And if you look at it, um, it's it starts at zero, and as you make your way through all the points, it will end at 100%. Okay, so let's look at our example. So as example 16, how fast can you run? As part of a student project, students were asked to sprint 50 yards. Their times were recorded, and the cumulative rel relative frequency graph of the sprint times is shown. One student who ran 50 yards and in 8 seconds. Is a sprint time of 8 seconds unusually slow? So let's talk about how to find this point on the graph. 50 yards in eight seconds. So his time right here, the time right here is down here. So we have sprint times on the x-axis. We're looking for about eight seconds. So we're gonna go, this is about eight seconds right here because each one of these goes about by 0.1. So we're gonna go up and we're going to go to this point on the graph and we have it right here. Now, the question is asking, is a sprint time of eight seconds unusually slow? Well, if we look at this um, and we connect this over here, I always recommend drawing these lines, by the way, it's gonna help you a whole bunch. You can even, even take a, like a corner of a piece of paper to help you find the exact line there. So if we look at where this line is, that appears to be around the 75th percentile here. So that's about 75%. So what does that mean? Well, it says that this student appears to be at the 75th percentile, which means that 75% of all the students had faster times than him. 75% of all the students had faster times. And this makes eight seconds relatively slow. Now, you just have to be really careful because in this example, we're talking about lower numbers being better. So again, be very careful when you are looking at this because it's not necessary that higher numbers mean better in, in this terms because if you have a slower time, that means you're faster. And faster usually means better when you're talking about sprinting, okay? So part B is talking about estimating and interpreting the 25th percentile of this distribution. So instead of going down here from sprint time and trying to find the percentage, we're actually going the opposite way this time. So here is 20, which makes this 25. So I'm gonna try to draw a line as straight as I possibly can across. And it looks like it's about 6.8. So what does that mean? That means about 25% of the students can sprint in a time less than 6.8 seconds. Okay. Um, I know this is gonna come up in other times, but remember that the 25th percentile is also the first quartile. Okay, because remember the first quartile is the first 25%. And that means the third quartile would be the 75th percentile. So you might find questions later on asking you about IQR. In this case, you would have to find the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile and subtract the two. Little bit of a spoil alert there, just in case you guys were wondering. Okay, so let's talk about one other way to measure uh, location and distribution. And that is with the standardized score or the Z score. Okay, um, 
And this is going to come up in so many other units, so it's very, really important to kind of get a head start on this. So the standardized score for an individual value in a distribution tells us how many standard deviations from the mean a value follows, So in and in what direction. To find the standardized z score, um, we're going to compute that z is equal to the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. You can also see that as the value minus the mean over the standard deviation. And another way you might see it written is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. These are all just different symbols for mean and standard deviation. We're going to talk more about those again in further units. Okay, so um, again, something super important here. If this is positive, it will be above the mean. And if it's negative, it will be below the mean. And again, something super important to remember is that the standardized score or the z-score is how many standard deviations something is above or below that mean. So let's go to another example here. Okay, Example number 17 are caimans affected by pesticides. Now, if you guys don't know, a caiman is like a little alligator or crocodile. Okay. Um, they make really annoying noises. You guys should definitely YouTube that. So the spectacle caiman is a crocodilian reptile that lives in the Central and South America. Researchers recorded the mass in kilograms of 14 caimans. The data are shown below along with a dot plot and summary statistics. Find the standardized z-score for the caiman that has a mass of 15 kilograms. And we're going to interpret this value in context. So we know a couple things. Okay, we know that z-score is going to be x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Okay, now we are given the standard deviation and the mean in the summary statistics. Okay, so this is the standard deviation and this is the mean. The other thing that we're looking for is the value that we are really kind of focusing in on, and that is actually this 15 kilograms. So now we have all three working parts. So now we have z is equal to 15 minus 9.81 divided by 3.93. And this is approximately equal to 1.32. Now, z-scores are commonly rounded to the nearest hundredths place or two decimal places. So what does this mean in, in context? This means that the Cayman's mass... is 1.3 standard deviations greater, because it's positive, than the mean the sample mean, because this is a sample of Cayman's, Trying to forget how to spell came in. Mass of, and this mean was 9.81 kilograms. Okay, so notice here that the z score doesn't have a unit. We didn't put kilograms after this because, again, this is 1.32 standard deviations, not kilograms. Okay, um, this will also show up in your um, sentence frames. This was be this will be the Cayman's mass will be context, and then this will always be standard deviation. This will be plus or it will be greater than or less than depending on what you're doing, and then the sample mean. This will be at the end here, and I'll, I will put this up online so you guys know what I'm talking about a little bit better. So the question is is You've probably heard about percentiles before, but why do we care about standardized scores? Well, let's do it. Let's let's talk about an example here. So we want to often standardize observed values to express them on a common scale. For example, we might want to compare the heights of two children of different ages or genders by calculating their z-score. So for example, Jordan is seven and is 51 inches tall. Her height puts her at a z-score of one. Okay, so she's actually one standard deviation above the mean. So that is, Jordan is one standard deviation above the mean height of all seven-year-old girls, which means she's taller than other girls her age. Now, Zane's height at nine is 54 inches. 
his corresponding z-score is 0.5. In other words, Zane is one half standard deviation above the mean height of nine-year-old boys. So while Zane is older, I'm sorry, taller than other boys his age, Jordan is taller relative to girls her age than Zane is relative to boys his age. Okay, so in general, Jordan is taller compared to people, to kids that are in the same age group and gender. Okay, so the standardized heights tell us where each child stands, ha, pun intended, in the direction of his or her age group. So by standardizing things, we can actually see how they scored or how they measure up, again, another pun intended, to their peers. So this is actually the end of today's lesson. In fact, it's actually the end of the unit. So I will be online in Google Meets, or you guys can email with me if you have any questions. I hope you have a fantastic day.